We're here today to talk about a fan-first approach to a customized brand experience and value creation, which in a way is the journey of CONCACAF, the Confederation of North, Central America and the Caribbean, to reestablish truly a relevant relationship with our fan base. I'm Jürgen Mankin, I'm the Chief Commercial Officer for CONCACAF. CONCACAF is uh, the governing body of soccer in the North, Central America and Caribbean region. Our mission is to develop and grow the game of soccer in the entire region. And in doing so, we also organize official tournaments that qualify teams from our region to the FIFA World Cups of those categories. Whether it's under 20, under 17, beach soccer, futsal, we do it, we do it all. We organize all of those events. And good morning. My, my name is Camilo Duran. I'm the Vice President of Property and Commercial Development at Soccer United Marketing, the Properties Division of Major League Soccer. We work with great property partners like the U.S. National Team, the Mexican National Team, and of course, CONCACAF that has uh, phenomenal properties like the Gold Cup, Copa America Centenario, and the Scotiabank CONCACAF Champions League. And we really focus on creating great uh, business solutions uh, that are considerate of brand objectives, uh, but also fan needs, all to create uh, a groundswell of engagement within our sport. And our collective mission is just to do that, to, to grow the sport. Uh, but in a world of political uncertainty, economic difficulties, and even things like you know, rat natural disasters in our region, we do it with purpose because we are very mindful of the role our sport can play in bringing people together, uplifting communities, or simply improving their day. Uh, it's part of our mandate. Before we talk about the way we establish the mission and, and, and our relationship with the fans, let's take a look at what we're talking about here. What, is the, what are the tournaments? What is soccer in the CONCACAF uh, region? Our journey to build a new CONCACAF for the fans began with really looking at ourselves. As the governing body of football in this region or soccer in this region, we were traditional. We were a little bit boring and we were stagnant. Everything a fan does not want from the governing body of soccer in the region. We looked at the fan and we also looked at how it was being challenged by the way it was consuming our product, whether it was on television or the way it was activated, or it was uh, looking at, uh, at it through social media and the digital channels. So the challenge of the fan tied in with the position, the way, the way we were perceived as a governing body uh, was really the first step in the way we looked at uh, transformation. And what better place to start than actually really understanding uh, our fans. The interesting thing about the CONCACAF region is, is its diversity. From a small, passionate Caribbean island to the United States, which boasts over 100 million fans of our sport, there's this really interesting, consistent thread. And that's that our fans are millennial, they're tech savvy, and they're eager to connect far and beyond what we would imagine with players, with competitions, with clubs. Incredibly passionate. And so that was really the basis of our, of our first step forward, is, is really understanding that fan base and knowing them uh, in terms of what they're looking for, their needs, before building. We also recognize a, a competitive advantage. I think with our fan base and all those characteristics, it's natural to really understand that, that they're young. And in comparison to other sports in a very competitive marketplace, it wasn't just an advantage in terms of commercial positioning and how brands look at us in the marketplace, but it was also a mandate because with this demographic, uh, I think we are required to build things a little bit differently and make sure that how we serve the sport uh, is, is uh, reflective of how they're consuming. As we're looking at uh, understanding on fan base, we also looked at the marketplace. Where do we compete? We're in a global marketplace. 
Soccer, unlike many of the other sports represented heavily in the United States, competes on a daily basis. I bet you anybody that is in this room or in this building today can turn the television on throughout this full week. And whether it's on ESPN with one of our partners here, or Fox, or Television, or Univision, they're going to be able to watch at least one game from their own country, either live or replay. So we are competing in a marketplace where people can consume the best of the best globally. In looking at the region, we also need to make sure that we are respecting our own diversity. We have 41 member associations, 41 countries that represent CONCACAF. Four plus languages are being spoken, you know, we, we include Creole in that. Over a hundred plus different types of, of broadcasters. The language, the culture, the economics, and even the maturity of each one of those markets vis-a-vis -vis the sport of soccer comes into play. The one fundamental thing that connects them all is the passion for soccer. As we add all of this information, we went back to the basics, to really how, do we can, how can we can start building uh, this new CONCACAF. And we started from the core. We went back to the basic, which is the game itself. When we develop soccer in CONCACAF, we don't only look at the high tier uh, elite athlete. We gotta go down to the amateur level, to the under 50s, to the under 20s, beach soccer, futsal. But not only as a sport itself, soccer has to be a vehicle of social and positive environmental change, which is part of what we are developing. All of this creates valuable, meaningful, content that we can use to engage with our fans. And that's where we started implementing what we call a 365 total approach uh, to building. You know, from a development perspective, it was important that we focus on the youth, the women, futsal, beach soccer, everything that CONCACAF governs. Uh, but it was also a blessing in, in terms of how we build properties moving forward commercially. If you focus on the men's game, your ability to connect with consumers on an annual basis is limited to specific dates, specific times. But by actually opening up the gates and, and providing unprecedented access to everything that CONCACAF has to offer, all of a sudden you have a wealth of opportunity to connect. The best of the best. A young girl in Curacao can now watch the women's national team in the United States. Or a 15-year-old developing in Honduras can actually watch the best 15-year-olds in the region compete. Uh, and commercially, it's been absolutely game-changing. Our, our approach was really fan first, and we've been talking about this, but what does that mean? I think for our fans, it's mobile first, and making sure that they have the ability to access things from their handset, because we know that's how they're living. It's not just about tuning in. Secondly, thinking about outside the 90 minutes. We love our sport, there's action on the field, but the realities are so much more beyond, and we realized our fans want to know more about players. They want to know about the building of certain teams. Uh, and that was really important, to start focusing outside of just the goals and what was happening inside the white lines. And finally, giving fans a voice. Uh, I think we all know this type of consumer, they don't want to be told, they want to have a say. They want to be able to be part of the development and the evolution of our sport in the region. And so we were very mindful to build that way to make sure that they were a part of it. Give a fan a voice, that's a very important point that we'll get back in the last of our examples. Uh, so we now understood the marketplace. We got an insight into who our fans were, uh, and we looked at the diversity within the region and, and the marketplace. But we needed to look at something that is very core to a sport that has been uh, the dominant sport around the globe for many, many years, and that's a tradition on how to make significant changes. Any changes to be made needed to be meaningful in the way our fans perceive the sport of soccer. So we went to work and started to uh, analyze formats in the way we can change our, our competition. In doing so, we actually involved the fans, the coaches, the players, the national teams, the clubs around the region. And the results began to be very tangible. Uh, we began with the changing on the format of the Scotiabank CONCACAF Champions League, a competition that had 62 games uh, total and that went down to two different tournaments, 30 games long, uh, single elimination, very, very exciting for fan format. But we took the last edition of the old format, which was 62 games, a lot of breaks in between the, the schedule, and that didn't really have too much meaning to the fan, and were very bullish about it. We pushed this 
last opportunity that had, uh, we were able to pull uh, the rights back. That's key for us, for the content point of view. We were able to pull the rights back from an existing rights holder and then use this competition as, as a way to supercharge our fans. With the rights at hand, we started to focus on the mobile first opportunity. Remember, this is a competition that was first put, uh, the first ever tournament on Facebook Live, official tournament completely from beginning to end. Mobile first uh, approach, video, video, video. Live, long, short, you name it, we were using it. Uh, branded content, as we began to create this uh, significantly, significant pieces of content, we started to integrate uh, our partners into, into the mix and social, snackable pieces that can be consumed on the go. Again, the first ever official tournament to be uh, played from beginning to end on Facebook Live. We've seen all the properties uh, doing a one-off, the NBA with certain games, uh, NFL. However, this was the first official tournament and, and the results for the group stage, uh, at least uh, in this slide, were very significant. Uh, over 13.9 million fans. Yeah. Uh, minutes viewed, 4.1. I'm going to speak louder to beat the guy next to me. Uh, <laughs> unique viewers, 2.7. And, and the way the, the, the fans were started to interact was very, very important. Over 251,000 comments and shares. Not only the live streaming of the games was important, we also used uh, some of the live uh, content to be able to submit in those uh, snackable pieces with live video content, social push, immediate. Immediate play-by-play -play and enhance fan engagement. Overall, the, the, uh, the, the partner integration was, was very successful. We, you can see here examples on how we used uh, you know, Nike, Allstate, Modelo, and Scotiabank uh, in certain examples. And uh, you know, the 34.5 million brand impressions above and beyond what was part of their, their, their contracts uh, was very significant in this uh, exciting relationship engagement. And I'll add that it's fundamentally changed the conversations that we are able to have uh, with new partners in terms of the, the mix of offerings. The next example we wanted to walk you through is something that we actually built from the ground up with, with a brand partner based on uh, discussions on their specific needs. And that is the Man of the Match Award. I think in the old world as we know it, there would be a technical study group, uh, a very seasoned game observer sitting in the press box, debating amongst themselves, choosing the Man of the Match and it would be announced to the world. And we thought there was a better way of doing that, a way of democratizing it, giving it back to the fans and creating a rich content experience around, around the award. So we sat down with our friends at CONCACAF, CONMEBOL, uh, and Budweiser, and we worked with a third-party data provider to develop a performance-based algorithm, where at a certain minute of the game, four players would be pop populated based on their performance, and we would ask fans to vote. So the whole call to action would go out uh, and across all social media touch points, as well as the dot-com, the app. Budweiser worked with its media partners to amplify as well, uh, and overall we generated thousands of votes on a, 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 on a match-by-match -match basis. Uh, the player was selected, we announced and deployed across all those channels, but what was interesting, what wasn't, hadn't been done at, at that time, was we actually rewarded fans immediately after their vote by taking the player on their way out from the tunnel and actually doing the man and match presentation, streaming it live with our friends from Facebook on Facebook Live, so fans were actually able to see the fruits of their label, labor immediately afterwards. Budweiser took the iconic trophy they developed, they took it to retail locations, to TV studios, fan fests, and really gave it a nice 360 spin. Um, overall, I think the results were, were, were really pleasing. You know, we had a partner that traditionally had looked at field boards and was really doing a lot of the content activation on their own, and we delivered $2.6 million in additional earned media value across social alone, uh, 6 million impressions. So while I think uh, the folks of the technical study group probably resented at first us pulling this away. I think overall even they would agree that uh, the overall process from engaging the fans to the discussion that it created across uh, bars and, and homes throughout, throughout the world uh, was well worth and we will continue doing this moving forward. As a confederation it was very important for us to go back to, to the basics, to really look at how we do things traditionally and how we can change it to be again much more fan friendly, much more engaging, and much more relevant to the fan, to the partners, and to the brand. So hopefully these two examples that we share with you today and a little bit of the road and, and, and the way we traveled uh, to solve this uh, uh, fan uh, engagement 
situation was actually relevant for all of you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions. That's the thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions?